Hi, my name is Margot Adler and I'm an evolutionary biologist at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia. My co-author Russell Bondariansky and I have written a paper for bioessays entitled Why Do the Well-Fed Appear to Die Young? in which we propose a new evolutionary hypothesis about the effects of dietary restriction on lifespan. This short video will provide some brief background and take you through the main points of our argument. Dietary restriction, which is sometimes referred to as caloric restriction, refers to feeding an animal a significantly reduced nutrient load without starvation. It was first studied in the 1930s during the Great Depression when governments were concerned about the effects of reduced food availability on human health. Scientists severely reduced food intake in dietary restricted groups of laboratory rodents, like the skinny one on the left, while giving others like the one on the right a normal or full feeding diet. Although the fully fed groups reproduced more, the scientists were surprised and intrigued to discover that they also died sooner. That is to say, dietary restriction appeared to extend lifespan. The same effect has also been observed in many other animals, and medical researchers are exploring dietary restriction as a possible means to prolong lifespan in humans as well. But why would eating less prolong life? There is one major evolutionary hypothesis that has featured prominently in the literature for decades. Let's call it the adaptive resource reallocation hypothesis. Think of the kidney beans in this animation as nutritional resources. The adaptive resource reallocation hypothesis explains the effects of food availability on survival and reproduction like this. When an animal is fully fed or has lots of resources, it maximizes its fitness by investing most of what it has into reproduction, with the result that it essentially neglects somatic or body maintenance and ages faster. Now, if an animal finds itself in a period of resource shortage or famine, it is thought to adaptively reallocate its available resources, investing almost everything it has into the soma at the cost of reproduction. This is thought to help the animal outlive the famine. This hypothesis has a number of flaws. For one, investing more in somatic maintenance would be unlikely to increase lifespan for most animals in the wild, where hazards such as exposure to pathogens and parasites, extreme temperatures, and predation are constant threats. Any delay in reproduction is therefore likely to entail a significant fitness cost for wild animals. Animals in the lab, on the other hand, are kept in benign environments where the only thing likely to kill them is old age and the diseases that come with it. This suggests that the lifespan extension effect of dietary restriction might be a laboratory artifact, since wild animals are exposed to very different sources of mortality. What's more, dietary restriction has been shown to increase susceptibility to environmental hazards like cold temperatures and live pathogens, while it also reduces the rate of wound healing. So dietary restriction might actually reduce rather than prolong lifespan in a natural environment. So is there a more plausible evolutionary explanation for the effects of dietary restriction? Dietary restriction results in a suite of physiological changes, and key among these is the increased rates of cellular recycling and repair mechanisms, including autophagy. Autophagy, which literally means self-eating, is a process by which damaged or degraded portions of the cell are sequestered, broken down, and then recycled back into the cell. Autophagy thus promotes protection and survival of the cell and also reduces rates of cancer. So, when the environment is benign and mortality rate is low, as in the lab, animals that have higher rates of processes such as autophagy are likely to live longer because they have lower rates of cancer and old age deterioration than their fully fed counterparts. If you block autophagy from occurring, dietary restricted animals don't live any longer than fully fed animals. But why are cellular recycling mechanisms like autophagy turned up during dietary restriction? The answer we suggest is that these mechanisms provide a crucial function when nutrients are scarce. 
They allow the animal to recycle stored nutrients within its food cells, meaning the animal can support itself with fewer incoming resources. We argue that this functions to make immediate reproduction more attainable by lowering the baseline level of nutrient intake the animal needs to survive. So, as opposed to the classic resource reallocation hypothesis, which argues that dietary restricted animals sacrifice reproduction to promote survival, we hypothesize that cellular responses to dietary restriction represent a strategy to allow for some immediate reproduction where it may otherwise have been impossible, and that lifespan is extended as a side effect in benign laboratory environments.